Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain Series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In the Explain Series, we take a subject and explain it. And this time it's the turn of hemophagocytic uh, lymphohistocytosis, hence why we only call it uh, HLH. Well, what is it? Uh, well, it's um, quite a, a rare disorder, and so we're going to be doing some common disorders and some rare disorders as the week uh, goes on. Um, and it is uh, effectively where the body makes too many activated immune cells. And there's uh, all sorts of different type of um, HLHs out there. Um, and they, uh, it's, it's, so it's got like a number of conditions all combined into one. Uh, the most common is the autosomal recessive or hereditary form of HLH. Uh, you can also have a acquired form of HLH, uh, but other types of uh, diseases also fall into this category. And so uh, one uh, type is uh, a macrophage activated syndrome, uh, which is autoimmune uh, associated. And so it covers a wide uh, spectrum, this uh, hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis. Uh, and so why is a, a sexual health doctor, uh, not a hematologist, uh, giving this presentation? Well, um, HLH is, uh, does come about with viral infections, and some of those viral infections, uh, or one of, the, one of those viral infections would be um, HIV. Uh, and so I have seen this in practice, but it is uh, uh, quite a rare um, manifestation. So uh, the causes, uh, you, you can split HIV up into two causes. On one side is the uh, familial and the other side is the acquired. Now I'm not going to say too much about the familial, just to say there's uh, five known uh, types and the immune system should really um, uh, turn off uh, cells that are no longer required, but there's obviously damage to these various um, areas um, uh, in the human genome, as it were, and so the body doesn't destroy uh, these immune cells. For the acquired type, uh, you, it, the main bulk of it is either um, uh, cancers or infections. Uh, a very, very common infection is um, the Epstein-Barr virus, uh, so the that's the same virus that causes glandular fever. And Epstein Barr virus is a form of herpes virus. So there are quite a few human herpes viruses out there. So you've got um, HSV 1 and 2, you've got VZV, and you've also got EBV, and there are others as well. Also, medications that suppress the immune system, uh, other immunodeficiencies, autoimmune diseases, and as I said, uh, certain types of uh, cancers. Um, it, uh, uh, in children, uh, they get, um, a, a, again, a form of um, HLH, which can be um, a, a, an X-linked uh, proliferative uh, disease. Um, and a quarter of adults also show this, uh, or especially of males as well, show this with uh, Epstein-Barr virus um, HLH-associated uh, uh, disease. And so it's, uh, it, so it is strongly uh, linked uh, to males with an X-linked disorder as well. Um, in terms of the virus that are associated, I've just put here quite a lot of uh, DNA virus, uh, RNA virus, and an RNA retrovirus, uh, HIV being one of them. Um, and there's a whole plethora of uh, viruses. So the human herpes uh, viruses, uh, as I said previously, um, and other uh, viruses as well. And some of the rare, rare types like uh, SARS or Crimean Congo hemorrhagic virus and hantavirus, uh, rotavirus, things you're not going to see that much in the, uh, sorry, rotavirus, you will see a lot in the, uh, in the UK, but rotavirus is a rare cause of HLH, even though it's a very, very common virus, uh, whereas other um, uh, infections which are more severe, uh, like for example uh, dengue or what have you, uh, or Epstein Barr virus, you're more likely to see um, HLH with. So it's more linked uh, to certain uh, viruses. Um, either way, uh, what are the uh, signs and symptoms? Um, though, <laughs> while there's quite a few genetic uh, links to uh, HLH and FLH, uh, to be honest with you, if you're ill and you end up in A&E, they're not going to do a genetic test on you. Um, and not, uh, not, not for another uh, 20 or 30 years anyway. Uh, so what they will do is obviously they'll measure your temperature, give you an examination and have a look over you. And so they should be able to tell some of these um, uh, uh, problems. So they should be able to tell if you've got a, a fever, if you have an enlarged uh, spleen and liver, more likely to be a spleen, um, skin rash, uh, also you might have breathing problems, lymph load enlargements, uh, abnormal bleeding, uh, kidney problems, and heart problems as well. Uh, 
And some of this will point to, does this individual have a lymphoma or le leukemia? Is having uh, raised lymph nodes and enlarged spleen uh, can very well be uh, due to uh, a lymphoma. Uh, and so uh, then it comes down to diagnosing. Well, uh, obviously blood tests will be done. And what they may see is a, a, a cytopenia, which is lower than normal uh, blood cells. Uh, but what they may also pick up is a high level of ferritin, and that's the second from last uh, point on this slide. So <clears throat> high levels of uh, ferritin, so a normal ferritin is, is anywhere between a, a very low number, um, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to um, 1 to 300, uh, depending on your sex. Uh, <coughs> uh, female sex tend to have a slightly lower ferritin level than uh, males. But also, uh, I'm not going to, it's very difficult to me to give exact figures. So if you're an American watching this, uh, the lab tests and the way uh, results are reported may be a little bit different. Um, but when I say high levels of ferritin, uh, so uh, if my ferritin level now is just, say, for example, 50 or 100, if I had HLH, I may have a ferritin level, level uh, in the thousands, uh, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000. Um, and uh, if you do have a very, very high ferritin level, um, a ferritin is a uh, inflammatory, inflammatory marker and where things like the liver and spleen are being damaged, um, more ferritin will be uh, produced or released uh, also in the bone marrow as well. <coughs> uh, and so that's why there's such a high ferritin level in HLH because it really is uh, damaging uh, these particular organs. So in terms of what is the treatment, well, if you have a, an inherited uh, uh, type of um, HLH, well, uh, the onset is going to be very, very young. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, the only real treatment is hemoparotic um, cell transplantation. Um, and that's considered a, a cure for familial uh, HLH. And it's, it, again, it's, uh, this treatment should be done as early as possible, um, but it's um, uh, the treatment itself is is pretty um, hardcore to be put uh, to put it uh, bluntly. Uh, for the acquired, which is why I'm making this video for people who have either have HIV or uh, have uh, had an unfortunate and gained uh, other infections or have a suppressed immune system, um, you really need to find out what the infection uh, infectious agent is, and that needs to be treated uh, as aggressively and as quickly uh, as possible. The exception for this is leishmaniasis related HLH, uh, where it's only treated with something called liposomal anthocyanin. Um, uh, now, Epsom Barr virus is uh, a very common uh, viral pathogen in acquired HLH. Um, um, however, uh, Epsom Barr virus. Uh, resides in something called B lymphocytes, which is a blood cell in, in the body. Um, and so what can happen is if you target it with um, a, a medicine called a monoclonal antibody, and ticks the map, uh, you can actually have a fairly good response uh, to treatment. <coughs> now, there are many, many treatment guidelines. Uh, the most common guideline which is used mostly is something called the HLH 2004 protocol. And that involves uh, various steroids, various other drugs, uh, and an intensif intensification of that therapy as time goes on. Um, and uh, depending on um, if you have Epsom Barr virus, Valan cyclovir may be added in as well, but it's a question of how much bone suppression you have, whether it's added on or not. But you also need supportive therapy. Uh, so cotrimoxazole, which is an antibiotic, uh, is also an antifungal and uh, gastro protection as well. Um, so with all this going on, uh, what is uh, the prognosis of HLH? Well, to be honest with you, it's not great. Uh, most patients that I've uh, uh, come across and usually are very ill uh, even before uh, HLH has been diagnosed. And so um, uh, the prognosis, unfortunately, is very, very poor. So uh, if you have an inherited form, it's usually the mean survival is uh, between uh, two to six months after diagnosis. Uh, with uh, treatment, if you survive the treatment, you can survive up to uh, five years. Um, acquired HLH is uh, not great. Um, it's uh, around about 20%, uh, but um, it's also a question of how much, um, how many problems you have as well. So if you just have HLH, which is Epsom-Barr uh, virus driven, 
and it's only that, and then that can be not too bad. It's possible to get over it. Um, but if you've got that and also poorly controlled HIV and also a T cell lymphoma, then unfortunately it's uh, not a very good uh, prognosis. Um, this is a, an area where there's a lot of research, there's going to be new guidelines coming out, and so a lot more work is being done. Uh, many haematologists are uh, uh, researching and looking into uh, new ways of treating this uh, exceptionally aggressive disease. Um, and so hopefully progress will be made um, uh, quite shortly with time. So, um, these are a list of many, many references, and if you uh, like the video, uh, please uh, like, subscribe and share, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, have a good sexual health. Take care.